has pixels per inch or PPI ever left you a little bit confused as to, to what, what do you need to do? When do you need to worry about this? Uh, that's exactly why I'm doing this video is because I get a lot of questions on it. I'm, I'm, I'm a creative person. Uh, I, I really value creative over all technical stuff. Um, so that's generally the videos and the things that I do. However, this is a question that I get a lot. So I just wanted to create something for my viewers, for my customers, uh, something that I can refer people back to them because I do see a lot of misinformation about that. So let's go ahead and jump in, make it try to try to make it pretty quick here. Uh, talk about a couple of things. So the first thing would be, you know, what is PPI? Okay, PPI is pixels per inch. Now, it often gets confused with DPI or dots per inch. PPI, pixels per inch, is how many pixels do you want to jam into one inch of paper, okay? DPI, dots per inch, has nothing to do with the computer, okay? You, you can control PPI, you can't control DPI because DPI is, DPI is, is, is a part of your printer, okay? It's a, it's, a, it's a number or a feature of your printer. And that's how many dots per inch that printer is going to print. But it is not affected by what you chose as your PPI on the computer. So DPI, is, as, for all intents and purposes, here in 2025, it's irrelevant. Okay, you there, there's not enough printers on the market that you can use it as a gauge on what printer to buy. Um, so it's, it's essentially irrelevant. This isn't a term that anybody really should be using at this point today. Uh, you can't control it. It's part of your printer, has nothing to do with how you prep your photo. So number one, get DPI out of your vocabulary, switch over to PPI. Number two, PPI is only for print. As I said before, it's how many pixels are you gonna scrunch into one inch of paper? It has nothing to do with your computer screen. It's got nothing to do with your phone. It's got nothing to do with your tablet or any other screen that's out there, okay? And I know that can be confusing because screens are usually measured in inches, right? That's, and that's just a marketing thing. Like we, we can say, oh, I can figure out what a 20 inch screen looks like. Uh, somebody tells me, oh, it's a 5,000 pixel screen. That doesn't tell me a lot. That screen could be this big, that screen could be this big. It just depends on how they, they lay that out. So, so people use inches, you know, same thing with your phone. Oh, it's the new iPhone that's the 6.9 inch screen or whatever. It has, PPI has nothing to do with you showing your photo on any type of screen, okay? Absolutely nothing to do with it. The only thing that matters about that screen, every screen out there has a pixel dimension. Okay, and you can go look it up in the manufacturer specs, what the pixel dimensions are, but every screen has pixel dimensions. That is how your photos are displayed, pixels. The only thing that matters when you are sharing your photo online or on any screen, what are the pixel dimensions? PPI, 100% irrelevant, don't even look at it, okay? Now, when does PPI matter? Well, PPI does matter when it comes to printing. The thing that's interesting about PPI is while we think it's this embedded number in our photos, right? You can you can go look at your photo. Your photo has pixel dimensions. And if you go in, if you're in Photoshop, if you go to image, image size, you can see those pixel dimensions and you'll even see the embedded PPI in there, okay? That number is irrelevant. You can go into Lightroom under the metadata. You can see the pixel dimension size of your photo. That's the only number that matters because you can make PPI anything you want inside of that number. So let's look to our example here. I've got a photo up on screen. It's 6,000 pixels wide by 4,000 pixels in height. So let's just, let's stick with width here to keep things easy. And if I were to put a ruler on that and say, I wanted to print this at 20 inches, okay? I wanna print this at 20 inches. Well, you can divide 6,000 by 20, and that's gonna give you your pixels per inch, which would be 300 in this example. So I can safely print a 20 inch photo at 300 pixels per inch. Now, I can also make this totally different. I can say, I wanna print this photo at 40 inches wide. Okay, great. Still got the same photo, the same photo dimensions. So you take that 6,000 pixels, you divide it by 40, what do you get? you get 150 pixels per inch. So as I said before, 
that number can be whatever you want it to be. Once it, there, there is no embedded PPI number that sticks to a photo because the only thing that matters is the width and the height of that photo. So I'll often have a lot of people that will message me and they say, you know, I'm entering a photo contest and the only thing it says as far as the image is upload a photo that is 240 PPI. Okay, upload a 240 pixel photo. 240 divided by 240, it's gonna give you a one inch print, right? They're not giving you everything you need to figure out what size photo to upload because the only thing that does matter is the width and the height of that photo. You can make the PPI anything you want. I can have my 6,000 pixel photo here and I can print it at 60 inches at 100 PPI, right? Just change that number in there and do the, do the math and you come out with your pixels per inch. It will change based on your print size. So this leads us to how do you pick the right one? Um, if you're printing yourself, just remember, you can't get good at printing without printing. So if you're printing yourself, try a few test prints. Try one at 300 PPI. Well, you'll hear numbers of 240, you'll have 200, 180, 150, 100. Try them out. You don't have to do it every time. Try it out once. You know you're gonna grab your magnifying glass and you're gonna stick your nose up to it and go look at it. And, and it's not gonna do you any good, but by all means do it. A more, more fitting test would be stick it on the wall call your friends, your family, whatever, into the room and have everybody look at it and just see when can you notice the quality drop off? Because remember, this is how many pixels you're scrunching into an inch. So eventually there's not gonna be, it's gonna, there's not gonna be as many pixels in that inch and you will see a quality drop off in there. So that's how you can determine it if you're printing yourself. If you're printing using an online service, they should tell you, okay? I looked up, NPIX is, uh, is one that's always been a favorite of mine. And I looked up mpix.com and I looked up their printing dimensions. And for 30 inch print, they give you a recommended and then they give you a minimum. So to me, when I do the math, it looks like the recommended one is about 250 pixels per inch, but looks like they'll print anything up to 150 pixels per inch. So uh, if you were to upload a thousand pixel wide photo, and then choose as your product, I want a 30 inch photo, they're gonna send you, it's gonna give you a message back that this isn't big enough, okay? So that's how you can figure that out. But again, ask, ask the printer. That's the best way to do this. The internet below will give you all of their opinions, which are worth exactly what you paid for them. Ask whoever is printing for you. The last thing would be the example that I used. I've got a photo that's too small, okay? And I wanna print it bigger. So in my example, I've got that 6,000 pixel photo. I wanna print it at 40 inches wide, but I've done my test, which by the way, my personal test, I'll print 150 to 180 pixels per inch all day long. I know for me, I don't sell prints. For my eye, those prints look just fine. They might not for yours, but for my eye, they look just fine. But let's, let's, let's go with an example. I've got my 6,000 pixel photo and I wanna print it at 40 pixels or 40 inches wide, okay? And I have determined for me, I want it at 300 pixels per inch, okay? Do the math, what do you got? You got 40 inches times 300 pixels per inch. What's that gonna give you? It's gonna give you 12,000 pixels. So that means my 6,000 pixel photo needs to be upsized to 12,000 pixels. I don't wanna make this an upsizing video. As I said before, with the with the PPI suggestions and all that, the, the internet's gonna have many, many opinions below. Um, here's what I can tell you. If you go to image, image size and Photoshop, type in 12,000 to my 6,000 pixel photo, it'll upsize it. And for my eye and for my needs, it does a great job. If you go into Lightroom and you do file export, you type in 12,000 pixels, it'll upsize it for you. If you print from Lightroom, you've got a 6,000 pixel photo, but you print it larger, it'll do the upsizing for you. I think it does a great job. I think Adobe does fine at 2X, 3X, 4X. As you get larger than that, there are other apps out there, Topaz, uh, On One. there's probably a bunch of other ones out there. Uh, as you get larger than that, you might wanna consider an app, but what I would do is don't rely on anybody else's opinion download the free version of all of those apps, try the upsizing and, and see what you see. See what differences do you see? Are there any differences in them? And that'll become apparent which one is probably gonna be best for you. Because remember, everybody's eye is gonna see something uh, a little bit different.
So hopefully that gives you a little idea what PPI is um, and whether or not you need to worry about it. And that's that's the biggest thing. So few of you are printing that so few of you really need to even worry about this. And you only need to worry about it on the photos that you print, which is probably a very small percentage uh, compared to all of your photography out there. So hopefully it takes a little bit of the, the stress off of always seeing that number. And if you wanna get back to a good creative editing video, uh, I think this place or this video would be a great place to go to next.